Greetings everyone! Take advantage of this video as a way to study and review for our Unit 5 test. My suggestion is to write down each question, pause the video, take some time to work it out on your own, then continue to press play to see if our answers match. The topics covered in this unit broken down were greatest common factor, grouping, AC method, difference of squares, solve by factoring, solve by square roots, solve with imaginary numbers, complete the square, and quadratic formula. Now, no, I'm not going to ask each of these questions individually, as I can ask all four of these questions within the solve for factoring category. GCF will also be included in solving for square roots and imaginary numbers. The questions that we'll go through in this video will give you a very clear idea on what to expect from the test. Again, take a moment to write this question down, pause the video, then work your way through the problem before pressing play again. To start off, I want to solve by factoring. The first thing I always need to check for is a GCF. In this case, I don't have a common factor I can divide out of all of those. Next, I can acknowledge that I have three terms, so I'm going to use the AC method. A times C gives me negative 24. My B value is 5. I need two factors of negative 24 that add to get me 5. If it helps, write down the factors of 24. 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8. And you can stop there because you'll notice 3 and 8 can get me to 5. Check your signs. This is your first checkpoint. I need one of them to be negative. If I try negative 3, negative 3 times positive 8 is negative 24. Negative 3 plus 8 does give me 5. So in this case, I'm going to rewrite my middle terms as negative 3x and positive 8x, which leads to my grouping step. My GCF of the first set is x. The GCF of my second set is 4. Here's my second checkpoint. I have the same thing twice, which is what I need. If I factor out that common factor of 2x minus 3, I'm left with x plus 4. Now I can set each factor equal to 0 and find my solutions. Here I end up with x equals 3 halves, and here I end up with x equals negative 4. With clean solutions like this, such as whole numbers, fractions, real answers, I can plug real answers back into the equation and see if I'm right. Take a moment to pause this video and try this question on your own first. First, let's check our GCF. I want my leading coefficient to be positive because it makes things easier. So I'm definitely going to divide out a negative. They're also all even, so I'm going to divide out a 2, would be the largest common factor I can take out. When I divide out a negative 2, I'm left with a 4x squared, a positive 12x, and a negative 7. I now have a trinomial, so I'm going to use AC. A times C is negative 28, B is 12. If I check my factors of 28, I need to find factors that can give me 12. And I can stop right here because 2 and 14, if the 2 is negative, can get me to 12. Here's your first checkpoint. Negative 2 times 14 is negative 28. Negative 2 plus 14 gives me 12. Those now become my new middle terms. I can now separate into grouping. And I'm actually going to just bring that negative 2 down here. I don't want to keep carrying it over. So let's take care of our GCF in the first set of parentheses would be 2x. 
the GCF in my second set of parentheses would be 7. Here's another checkpoint. I ended up with the same thing twice. Therefore, I'm good to go so far. Factor out that common factor of 2x minus 1, which leaves me with a 2x plus 7. All of that is still with my negative 2. And it's all equal to 0. Set each factor equal to 0 and solve. Well, negative 2 does not equal 0, so we're going to cancel that out. Here I end up with x equals 1 half, and here I end up with x equals negative 7 halves. Leave them as improper fractions. It's less work that way, and it's just easier to, to work with in other problems. Pause this video. Let's take care of simplifying these complex numbers. I want to take care of my like terms. So 17 minus 18 gives me a negative 1. And then we have negative 9 minus negative 7i. If it helps, take it out of the problem to work with it. I have a negative 9i minus a negative 7i. Subtracting a negative becomes positive. If I combine like terms, I now have negative 2i. Standard form means the real part followed by the imaginary part. So this is my final answer. This one, I am multiplying. So in this case, I have two terms by two terms, so I want to use FOIL or the box method. We discussed which method is better depending on your math classes in the future. So let's take a look at FOIL or double distribution first. My first terms multiplied gives me negative 8. My outer terms multiplied give me a negative 28i. My inner terms multiplied give me a 4i. And my last terms multiplied give me a 14i squared. Now we have to remember off to the side that i squared equals negative 1. So that means that that i squared is now times negative 1. They're written next to each other. So that means multiplying. I now need to take a look at what I want to simplify first. I'm going to take care of, of course, the 14 times negative 1 to get negative 14. I'm also going to take care of the middle like terms of negative 28 plus 4, which gives me negative 24i. I can then combine my other like terms on the outside, negative 8 minus 14, which gives me a negative 22. Bring down my negative 24i. And I've now combined all like terms and I have a complex number. Standard form says real part followed by imaginary, so that is my final solution. Take a moment to pause if you need to. When I take a look at this, I want to take care of parentheses first, which means I'm going to distribute. I first have a negative 3i times 9, which would give me a negative 27i. I then have a negative 3i times negative i. A negative times a negative is positive. 3 times 1 is 3. And i times i is i squared. Remember, i squared equals negative 1. Therefore, this becomes a negative 3. And I still have the negative 27i. Taking care of all squares, combined length terms, my last step is to write it in standard form, meaning real part followed by imaginary part, which gives me my final solution. Take a moment to pause if you need to.
As I take a look, I have two terms. My first step on all of these solving ones have been check out your GCF. In this case, I do have a GCF of 2. If I take out a 2, I'm left with 9x squared plus 4. My first thought is, is this difference of squares? I can square root both terms. The only difference is I have a plus sign. Difference of squares means difference, subtraction. So I cannot use difference of squares, which means at this point, the only thing I can do is set each factor equal to zero. Two can't equal zero, so I no longer need the GCF. Now I want to isolate the x, so I'm going to subtract four from both sides. Divide both sides by nine. x squared equals negative four ninths. I'm now going to square root both sides which leaves me with x equals the square root of negative 4 over the square root of 9. The negative comes out and becomes imaginary. So I now have x equals i squared of 4 over square root of 9. But both of those are perfect squares. So the square root of 4 equals 2, not square root of 2, just 2. Square root of 9 is 3. So I do not have to rationalize the denominator if it's a perfect square. I'm missing one thing. Does anyone see what it is? The second you square root, you need to have a plus or minus. My reminder is that I should have two answers within my work. So plus or minus 2i over 3. Let's solve again. In this case, remember, you can't distribute the negative one-third or the squared. We cannot distribute because it has a squared. We can't distribute the squared because we have a minus sign. But here's the thing. If you approach every problem from the perspective of getting x by itself, then you won't have to worry about that. So my first step, I'm going to add 15 to both sides. That leaves me with a 15. I'm then going to divide both sides by negative one-third. 15 divided by negative one-third. You're taking a big number divided by little pieces. So how many little thirds can fit into 15? Or Think of it as multiplying by the reciprocal. That's how I would get rid of it. But I actually have 15 times 3, which gives me a negative 45. Be very careful to just divide by 3. That's a common mistake. You're dividing by 1 third. I then want to square root both sides, which leaves me with an x minus 6 plus or minus square root of negative 45. That negative right away needs to come out and become an i. That square root of 45 does reduce down. It has a good and a bad root as I've generalized it. So think of a good and a bad root for 45. We end up with 9 and 5. Square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 5 stays 5. So that brings me down to plus or minus 3i radical 5. I'm going to add 6 to the right side, which goes out front. I'm adding it to the whole thing. So here are my final two solutions for solving the square root. Let's take a look at this example. Pause to write it down and start by completing the square. My first step is to make sure it's in standard form. I'm going to move everything to the right side because I want it, the leading coefficient to be positive. So that leaves me with 0 equals 3x squared minus 9x minus 12. Now for completing the square, we have that special rule where we don't want a leading coefficient. So I'm going to divide everything by that leading coefficient. And I'm left with 0 equals x squared minus 3x minus 4. 
Remember that that takes care of step one. Step two is to move the constant to the other side. So I now have x squared minus 3x equals 4 because I add this 4 to the other side. Step 3 is completing the square. So I want to take that middle term and I'm going to divide it by 2 and square it. That leaves me with 9 fourths. I'm going to take that 9 fourths and I'm going to add it to both sides of my equation. If I take a look at that left side of the equation, it's now factorable. That left side becomes x minus 3 halves quantity squared. So remember that comes from you have two options. Or, or excuse me, you have three options. You can take the b and divide it by 2, you get negative 3 halves. You can do part of the AC method and say 9 fourths and negative 3. So it would have to be 3 over 2 and 3 over 2. Watch your signs, though. In this case, um, the negative will always be the case in our parentheses. Or you can take that AC method and just complete it all the way. So in this case, you could completely do the AC method. On the right side, I'm going to take care of that. And if I do some little side work here, 4 over 1 plus 9 fourths would be the same as saying common denominator of 4, therefore 16 plus 9. So that would give me, let's see, 25 fourths. We've completed the square. The fourth step is to solve. So I'm going to take that equation that I have and I'm going to isolate the x. First thing I'm going to do is square root. Notice that when I square root, the right side are perfect squares. So I end up with positive or negative 5 halves. Convenient how that works. Next, I want to add the 3 halves over to the right side. So I now have 3 halves plus or minus 5 halves. Those are numbers I can work with. So I'm actually going to separate it. I'm going to say 3 halves plus 5 halves and 3 halves minus 5 halves. Common denominators already exist, so I have 8 halves or 4. Here I have negative 2 halves, which equals negative 1. So my final solutions are x equals negative 1 and 4. So keep in mind in this instance, that actually means that this was factorable to begin with. But I will ask you to complete the square on the test, and it might not be such a nice one that works out conveniently. Take a moment to pause and try this question on your own. We're going to use quadratic formula. You need to find a way to remember a quadratic formula. If it's humming a tune, then hum the tune. Quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. First thing I notice is it's not in standard form. I need to move everything to one side. Make sure the leading coefficient is positive, descending exponents. Now with completing, or excuse me, with quadratic formula, you do not need to get rid of that leading coefficient. You can leave it as is. So that's a little different than completing the square. So let's plug in our values. I know my a is 2, my b is 14, and my c is 8. They're all conveniently positive values on this one. So I'm going to start off with a negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared. Now you'll notice 14 squared, I don't even want to deal with a number that big. Guess what? That's a hint. What did we forget to do? Take a look at that quadratic. We want to take out a GCF. 
when numbers get that crazy, that's a good hint to you. I'm not going to give you something that large. So I'm going to take out a 2, which leaves me with x squared plus 7x plus 4. Those numbers are much more reasonable. Now my a is 1, my b is 7, and my c is 8. So let's try this again. My formula says add negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared, ah, 7, much easier to work with, minus 4 times a times c. My a is 1, my c is 4, all over 2a. The whole thing is over 2a. Now, yes, my a happens to be 1, so that takes care of it pretty easy there. Let's work on reducing. Negative 7 stays negative 7. 7 squared is 49. 4 times 1 times 4 is 16. And I'm subtracting that 16. Be very careful of your signs right here. I've noticed a lot of issues on the homework as far as that goes. All over 2. The next step, I'm going to take care of what's under that radical. 49 minus 16 gives me 33 all over 2. Now we need to check to see if that radical reduces. In this case, there's no negative to take out. 33 does not have a perfect square that divides in. So in this case, that is my final solution. Well, we've worked our way through all the type of questions that will be on your test. This will be a level test so that you have an option of maybe four problems and you have to choose three. As always, if you have the time, attempt more and I will grade all of them and give you the most points possible out of the three that would count towards your grade. A couple of ideas on different ways to study. Rework homework problems. Take your homework, write down some of the tougher problems that you had on a separate sheet of paper, rework them, and then check your answers on your homework. You've got a review sheet. Make sure you work on those questions as a way to study. Rewatch lesson videos. Towards the end of the second half of this unit, I made videos even though we did lecture in class. Just like a song, you can't hear it once and think you're good to go. You need to hear it multiple times for you to remember it. So rewatch the lesson videos or quadratic formula song videos. Ask for extra help in the Sabre Center. Seek out me or other math teachers to assist in your studying process. If you have any additional questions, let me know. But I've provided everything you could need to be successful, not only in class, but in Google Classroom. Good luck, study hard, and we'll see you on test day.